Um, in uh, December 2013, uh, I organized a symposium at uh, MRS4 meeting on uh, elastic string engineering. And uh, recently, we've also organized a special issue uh, shown here on MRS Bulletin on the same topic. Uh, Professor Bill Gay Yudis uh, in NSC department has also contributed an invited article on uh, strained uh, catalysts. Um, and generally, this is a, a new field, an emerging field, uh, that started uh, since the mid 90s, where people try to use uh, elastic strain to control the physical and chemical properties of materials. And this is enabled by the emergence of nanomaterials, which can reversibly take up a much larger dynamical range of tensile or shear stress than traditional materials. Now, we know, for example, a bar of steel can be bent a lot, let's say 100%, but more than 99% of that total strain is plastic, uh, and only less than really 0.2% uh, percent is elastic strain. Whereas in nanomaterials, most of the strain we apply can be elastic. And by changing the lattice parameter and the shape of the lattice, uh, we can change physical properties like the band gap, the carrier mobility, and chemical properties like diffusivity and chemical reactivity. And this uh, sort of follows uh, Richard Feynman's uh, famous prediction, there is plenty of room at the bottom. What Feynman was talking about is with miniaturization, with reduction of sample size or grain size, uh, you have a much larger room for uh, tuning uh, material properties. And this is one manifestation of that. By reducing the characteristic size scale of materials, we have a much larger parameter space, in this case a six-dimensional elastic strain space, uh, to change the property. Just like by changing the chemical composition of the alloy, you can change the property of that alloy. And, uh, this is a, recent, a relatively recent field because you need four ingredients uh, to make it happen. Number one, you need to have uh, nanomaterials such as nanowires, nanotubes, nanoparticles, thin films, uh, nanocrystals, uh, to be able to sustain a, a large range of uh, dynamic elastic strain. And uh, carbon nanotubes was discovered in 1991 and uh, nanocrystals were found in the mid-90s, and with the proliferation of nanomaterials around us, we now have a lot of samples uh, to play with. Uh, number two is uh, you need to be able to apply force and stress at the nanoscale in a controlled manner. Uh, the atomic force microscope was invented in 1986, and with that we now have a lot of instrumented uh, indentation that can allow us to apply the strain. And also with strain, we need to measure the associated change in physical properties, such as the band gap. With MEMS and the lab-on-chip technologies, we can now have sensors to make those measurements in situ. Number three is we have to be able to measure the strain distribution with electron microscopy or with synchrotron. And also, if the intended strain goes away, uh, in a time period shorter than we expected, uh, then we also need to know what happens, whether the strain relaxes by dislocation plasticity or by diffusion. And so we need to understand the deformation mechanisms and the fracture mechanism in order to defeat them to have this elastic strain for long enough time in a large enough uh, piece of material and uh, for applications. And the fourth point is, uh, uh, because strain space is so large, it's six-dimensional, uh, it's easy to get lost in if you only have experiments. So we need to have first principles calculations and also uh, excited state calculations to predict uh, how large of a strain range a material can sustain and what range of physical properties can you achieve uh, with changing strain. Uh, so. Uh, most of these four ingredients individually didn't exist before the 1980s, and their grand confluence only started uh, uh, since the mid-90s. And within 20 years' time, uh, we already have uh, strained oxide, strained atomic sheets, and also a billion dollars strained semiconductor industry to show for it. So I think this is a very promising field, and I really think uh, in the long run, this could have a, a big effect on uh, human civilization. Thank you.